Hey guys, Danny Johnson here, and today I want to talk about the 26 spline input shaft upgrade for the 0304 Cobras with the T56 transmission. So 26 spline would be referring to how many teeth or splines there are on the shaft. Factory, there's 10. The aftermarket one is 26 spline. With this, you're going to also need to shim up the shaft, and I have a full video I can put in the video description of how that process is done. So typically you buy the shaft and a shim kit, um, but what I wanted to talk about today was some of the trouble that we've had with um, what input shafts are now on the market. Now you need this 26 spline input shaft so it will match the 26 spline clutch like this McLeod RXT. Now Tremec used to offer a shaft that worked for the 0304 Cobra because they don't all do and it was part number TUFM6132. You could also find it from Liberty Gear or D&D, &D, but there was always this controversy that it was just the Tremec shaft that was reboxed. There was also talk that one of the companies was actually using the GM shaft. They just had to shorten it or alter it so that it would fit for the 0304 Cobra. And so I did my best to try to track it down, and I didn't like the other ones that I'd find because they would use the exact same model number but they would just put other numbers or letters in front of it to make it sound like it's the Tremec one. And I had to really dig deep to find out that it was or was not the real Tremec shaft, and a lot of time you're looking at what metal it's made of. The Tremec ones were made of 9310 steel, and then the newer ones are 8620, and you can almost tell by how they look. The newer 8620 metal is more of a silver color. But everywhere I looked, they came up with the white box that you see. And um, here's the shim kit that I bought. I tried really hard to find the actual Tremec shim kit. That was hard to track down. So I put a part number here that you can find as well. Um, but in the end, that didn't even work with the shaft. So if you watch my install video, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. I was also very disappointed when I got the uh, retainer sleeve. Um, I'm ordering this all from a Tremec well-known distributor. I'm not going to say who they are, but I was very disappointed with their customer service because I noticed it didn't even have the O-ring on the bottom, which is part of the install. So I was very disappointed with them when I said, what do I do to get an O-ring? And they said, just reuse your old one. And I'm like, it's 20 years old. It's flat. There's no way I'm reusing that. And so I had to go dig one up and find it. And on top of that, what bothered me is I had paid for the extra seal, and so they had no problem sending me this seal that I already have in the back of the new one. So I got to pay for an extra $20 to have a replacement seal that it already comes with new. So their customer service was not great. I was not happy at all. But uh, anyway, here's the white box that it came in. And if you look at review pictures and unboxing from other people, it seems like it's all the same white box. And the shaft looks identical, and it already has the bearing installed. And so um, the company, the Trimic distributor that I was ordering from, there showed it not installed because that's how it used to come from Tremec. And then you would have to have the bearing pressed on and uh, have a shim under it. So in the end, my opinion is that these are all the same shaft no matter where you order them from. And as much digging as I did, looking at pictures and saying this must be the right one because there's no bearing installed and all that just isn't going to work. Whether it's lethal performance, late model restoration, D&D, &D, all of them that I've seen come in the same box and they look identical. Lightning Force Performance also had them for sale and same white box, looks the same. There was one other from Fisher Motorsports that claimed it was still the original. It had the picture of the original Tremec one with the part number. I ordered it and I waited weeks and didn't get a response, not even a shipping confirmation. And so I finally had to cancel the order. So as far as I could tell, it's not possible to find the original Tremec one. And so I thought, well, this is kind of my only option here is to make this one work um, and try shimming it up and see what happens. It seemed to fit just fine when I worked it into the transmission. Um, but as I started to install the cover and work with the shims, that's where I really ran into trouble. So the idea with the shim kit is you're changing how thick it is in the cover of the transmission so that that shaft is properly seated. And you'll know you have it either too tight and need to change the shimming or it's too loose and wobbly. 
And so what I eventually found out, though, is that this, the distance basically from the bottom of the shaft to the top of the bearing was off on the new one. It was a little bit bigger, so that was making it so that it wasn't fitting with the regular shims that we would try to use. So every time we would put this together, it would come out so tight that you could almost not turn the shaft. A little bit too much binding in it. I even took it over to a friend's house to try to press the bearing on in case maybe it wasn't fully seating and that didn't really help too much, but all of the factory shims in the Tremec kit were designed to fit with their bearing on the size that it should be. So if the shaft was as it was supposed to be, any of these ones would get you close. Any of these that I had put in made it so that they were too tight. So I had to go down in size and there wasn't a smaller shim. So I kept going back and forth and as you can see here I mean it it wouldn't even move with the regular shim so I had to find my old 8.8 .8 inch carrier shims from the rear differential because they have the same inner diameter what I like about these is they were so much more fine that you could make combinations of different sizes so all I would do is lay down the uh, race over it and as you see it has the same inner diameter so that was fine I just had to trace that out with a marker and then that's you know get the thickness that I was looking for according to my calculations and then take aviation snips and cut the outer diameter until it would fit down in the case so I was able to get this to work to where it was right but I was hoping that the uh, input shaft gear wasn't now going to be too far in or out on the uh, the counter shaft gear and it seemed like it worked out okay. I was able to get it shimmed up to where I, I felt comfortable with it after using all these different combinations and uh, doubling some up. And so I, you know, doing my math, I got it down right to where I felt like it was good. And sure enough, it would spin similar to how it was from the factory. So I was feeling pretty good about that. Tremex end play spec is zero to two thousandths. And you usually do it the transmission vertical, but I didn't want to mess anything else up, but we were there. So I got that good. It had a little bit of wobble in the nose, which is what it should have, and it spun to where it felt like it was okay. So uh, I went ahead and moved forward with it. You know, the shaft fit perfectly in the clutch, uh, so I, I used it as the alignment tool to line up both of the twin disc uh, clutch plates, and using some uh, electrical tape on the tip of it so I wouldn't scar up where the pilot bearing will go. I was able to set the preload to this back to what I had from factory. So from the factory, it was half an inch pound of preload, or meaning if I turned this, it would take half an inch pound uh, to turn the shaft. That's with the gears installed and everything, so you're not looking at the bearing preload, you're just looking at the overall uh, installed uh, measurement. So uh, the factory one, again, we got it to you know half of an inch pound when I first started. With the 26 spline input shaft, it was coming up to one and a half, and then we got it down after shimming it right to where they were making the same measurement. So that's where I felt comfortable enough to install it. I felt like the shaft was in solid, and it was also um, set right. Um, but in the end, I still came out with a little bit of gear runout noise in neutral, and I had other people message me saying they had the same thing, and so we we're pretty sure it's either the shimming that we had to do to get it to fit right and that gear is just you know inside the transmission a little bit too tight or out a little too far uh, either that or it could be the different material that you're using uh, another friend of mine who's very good with mechanics said that uh, it could just be how the 26 spline input shaft was uh, cut for the gear uh, set so it could be a few things but i'll let you listen to what it sounds like here uh, but in the end, I was able to get that same uh, measurements. Now I turned up the volume on the next clip, but what you're going to hear is the sound. Then you'll hear me push in the clutch, and the sound will go away. And then I'll let the clutch back out, and it will start again. And then I'll push it in, and it will disappear again.
driving around, it's completely unaffected. The car shifts just fine, and that should be because the gears are all farther back in the transmission. It's really the input shaft with the counter shaft is where this noise would be coming from, so it shouldn't affect anything else with shifting. A friend of mine said he did the same thing, had the same noise. His was even a louder noise in the beginning. Um, he tried shimming it in different ways and came up with the same thing. So we're pretty sure that it's just the quality of this aftermarket 20 spline input shaft. Now my friend lives just down the road from this distributor and he was getting the same noise, if not worse. And so when he went down to talk to them, they said, well, see if it goes away with mileage. And when I called in at the same time, we're going through the same thing. They said the same thing. Yeah, just see if it goes away with mileage. And they didn't seem very concerned about it. And, you know, they are racing professionals and they do it all the time. So I kind of took their word for it. Um, and my friend did say that his eventually did quiet down after about 1,500 miles. I was quite upset because the more that I reached out to this company who was a Tremec distributor, it's not Tremec themselves, uh, they were very highly rated. Everybody talked to them on the internet about how good they were. And when I asked about the source for it and everything, they would not tell me. When I said, where is it made, they would not give me any information. They just said, it's good enough that we put it in, uh, in cars that we built, so you should be okay. So I had the hardest time calling them, waiting for weeks for them to get back to me. They wouldn't get back to me. I'd call back in. And I know that they're a shop, and I know that they're busy, but they definitely were not taking care of me as a customer. So at this point... Everything's in and it works. The car drives really smooth. It just has a little bit of noise there at neutral. My friend said his noise went away about 1,500 miles later. I'm kind of in the same boat, just driving my car a little at a time. I don't want metal shavings going through the transmission and, and you know ruining the whole transmission. Uh, at this point, I guess I'll just let it ride, and if it ruins the transmission, I go with a Magnum, or I put this transmission in my Mach 1 and get a Magnum. So um, anyway, I just wanted to make a video about kind of what's happening now with these 26 point input shafts. So maybe Tremec will make another batch. I'm not sure if they have or will. Um, it has to be for the 0304 Cobra T56. The ones from the F body Firebirds and Camaros is not the same. So it does have to be a specific one for the 0304 Cobra. So let me know in the comments what you think and uh, if you are thinking about doing a 26 in, uh, spline input shaft, then this is something to consider that compared to just buying a Magnum. But I've also had friends say their Magnums make strange noises too, so maybe you'll just never get away from this. So anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thanks, guys.